Hi, I'm Jason Gorber, and we're here to look at the Denon SAVR S760H. So hard sometimes to keep all these numbers in line in your brain. Anyway, here's a uh, home theater receiver from our friends at Denon. Um, uh, my reference system is actually part of the Denon family. I have a Marantz preamp, and so I'm relatively familiar. Uh, I've owned a number of Denon uh, pieces of equipment over the years. I've always found them to be um, uh, quite excellent. Uh, the Japanese company has been at the forefront of a lot of this technology, and they have um, various levels in their range from the sort of um, initial sort of consumer end all the way up to high end um, uh, systems that are the home, a uh, heart of, of, of many, many home theaters and um, other people who love listening to music and li listen to movies. And uh, this is a very interesting model. It is um, uh, probably most of use for people who want really good sound but also our big gamers. Um, I know that's uh, an increasingly important market. It's not a market I'm actually a part of, um, uh, funny enough, but I do very much appreciate the need to actually have something that actually does a um, fundamental job. I've talked about this before, what a receiver really does, this is not only decoding the audio that uh, is coming from your various sources, but acting as a switcher. So it's somehow going between um, uh, your various inputs. So rather than having to worry about changing input on your television, you basically plug everything into this. This does the switching between audio and, and video services, then spits it out to your, your, um, your monitor, your television. And uh, a lot of um, uh, models up to um, contemporary models do not fully support HDMI um, at, its, at, its, uh, at its current level. Um, uh, which uh, allows for 4K 120 hertz or 8K 60 hertz. And this model does, it has six HDMI inputs on the back. I'll show you in the back, the back in a moment. But six HDMI inputs in the back, three of which are fully capable of doing basically full bandwidth, which allows you to, for example, plug in, let's say an Xbox or a PlayStation, the, uh, the latest level, and actually have your full um, a VRR, virtual refresh rate, full um, uh, bandwidth, essentially, um, HDMI signals, plus the advantage of having full um, um, uh, Atmos sound and the like. Um, it's, it's 75 watts a channel into two channels. Um, the spe specifications um, um, sort of run that way. The tests... Basically, though, when you do that kind of testing, it's really testing in stereo mode, not necessarily in full speaker mode. Um, and, and so this will drive any reasonably um, efficient speaker system. You're not going to use these to drive big monster speakers without a lot of effort, having to crank the volume up uh, probably more than you want it to. But if you have any reasonable, like, bookshelf um, satellite speakers, obviously will be fine. But if you have any sort of reasonable bookshelf speakers without um, crazy need uh, impedance to drive, um, this will do a very, very good job. Again, I think this is a perfect solution for those that just want to set it and forget it. This is not something to be upgraded, not something to work in liaison with other models, um, it, it simply does what it needs to do, which is a buy a receiver, a home theater receiver that you plug in and it drives uh, your Atmos system. Now, there are seven channels of amplification in this. You can set that up in various ways uh, using the menu. Um, you can set it up, obviously you can set it up in stereo mode, um, just if you only have two, uh, two speakers. Uh, you can set up in um, uh, 7.1, which is front, center, left, side surround, rear surround, or you can set it up in an Atmos or DTSX setup where you basically have 5.1, so front, center, left, side or rear surrounds, and then ceiling speakers. It does not have, and I'll, I'll show the back. I mean, this, for those that care about such things, you can see it's not the latest thing in the world. But you can see here we have our HDMI inputs. We have our, our robust um, um, speaker uh, ports here, um, banana plug compatible. We have Wi-Fi, we have Ethernet, we have even some uh, uh, composite uh, inputs, which are great. Anybody who has a VHS player sticking around, I have LaserDisc, so I'm really pleased to actually see this in 2022 continuing. It also has a photo input, which is excellent. It has a moving magnet um, uh, photo input. I'm super pleased to see that. So again, this truly can be the heart of both your music and movie system. I'm a big fan of that. That's the way I run my stuff. Now, um, again, we have those six inputs and the one output on the back, but what we do not have here are RCA outputs to 
additional Atmos amplification. So you can't really use this as a processor. You can't have this as your 7.1 system and then have something else amplifying 2, 4, 6 Atmos. That's not what this is designed for. There are other Denon and or Marantz um, um, items that do that sort of thing. That's not what this is for. What this is for is the person who wants the biggest bang for their buck to get something that sounds really terrific, that basically works with almost every codec you want. Codec meaning the type of um, uh, audio package or video package that, that um, you want to run through here. And, and to do a good, if not excellent job of um, making that stuff sound great. And this absolutely does that. The remote, again, relatively straightforward to remote. Nothing super fancy. It's got a couple um, quick select buttons that are customizable. It does have the surround modes on the bottom. It has this eco button, which I guess, you know, we need to have. But when you're doing this stuff, it's already not so eco-friendly um, at the best of times. But nonetheless, we want to uh, sort of get the most out of um, what we can. So it's nice to actually see that, that there, there's a button to actually accommodate that. On the sticker, you can see this just absolute oodles of... Um, uh, different uh, uh, capabilities. I'm also DTSX being the, um, um, again, the surround uh, modes, the object-based uh, surround modes that are on the top. But you also have all this gazillion different uh, inputs. Spotify Connect, um, it, it's got um, uh, capabilities for all, for Siri and Alexa and and Google, it has it has these uh, all all the the various modes that you can actually use on their their app and actually um, stream directly to it. The fact that it has Ethernet on the back, big big plus. Um, we all know that um, for for those in the know, if you can actually wire it in, it is much much better to have every every device you wire in makes everything else's Wi-Fi work that much better. So if you can wire it in, it's great. But otherwise, you have these little antenna that sort of stick out of the back. Here they are, these little two little guys that you can actually have um, for going um, Wi-Fi if you wish. You're not actually streaming a video to here, so the bandwidth for Wi-Fi um, um, is, is sufficient. I just much prefer Bluetooth for that type of connection. Uh, sorry, for Ethernet for that type of connection. Uh, Bluetooth on my mind because, of course, there is a Bluetooth um, compatibility. Bluetooth isn't always the best sound. You're actually usually getting better from the internal streaming, actually using the internet with the unit, using the unit to pull the song down rather than on your mobile device, then to Bluetooth, then to the device. But nonetheless, the fact they can connect via Bluetooth, why not? Modern, modern device should absolutely do that. Beefy knobs here, one's volume, one's input. You see that, that. Um, we have one of these sort of blue pixelated um, screens that has, God, I had stuff from Sony in the 1980s that had pretty much identical sort of uh, pixelated layout. Very straightforward. Hardly, it looks like a receiver. This could be from any era. The difference is that its internal capabilities um, have, have uh, really uh, risen to the top. And because of those HDMI inputs, that's truly its biggest selling point. If you are looking for something that is a little bit future-proof, that allows you to hook up gaming consoles or UHD, 4K, Blu-ray players, um, to have your television talk to it nicely. And if you're not gonna go crazy with the number of speakers that you have in your house, like I have done, um, this really is a very, very solid contender at a very reasonable price to get you sort of a robust um, uh, receiver that works very, very well at the level of which it's intended. Once again, this is not something for you to sort of build upon in terms of upgrading this and adding to this. This is kind of a set it and forget it model. And because of that, I actually thoroughly recommend it for people who are looking for something that this solves. You look at the specs, you look at what it does. Is that what you want it to do? It's going to do that and it's going to do it very well. With enough power, with enough oomph to drive... Um, even more robust. For subwoofer, of course, we get seven channels of amplification. I should note for subwoofer, you are going to use RCAs to actually output to your powered subwoofer. So it's not going to be working for non amplified, uh, non self powered um, subwoofers. But nonetheless, your heart of your home theater system, this is a very good thing to look at. Denon is, is, uh, makes very quality products that um, I've had some that have lasted again, decades. Um, I think that they do a fantastic job. Uh, the sound is um, 
good, uh, good to excellent for what for what you're getting. Um, their signature sound isn't uh, tweaked so heavily. They really do um, care about uh, sort of producing the most that you can. The impact is is more than sufficient for what you're getting and what you should expect from this type of model. And I really think that um, those that are um, seeking something out, that just want something that, you know, you take it out of the box, you plug your speakers in, you plug your HDMI in uh, from a game console, your UHD player, you plug your television into the back, you set it up with its setup menu, which I gotta say, is looking a little ancient. The pixelated um, um, uh, mode, they, they spend a lot more time worrying about how the thing sounds than how it looks. Unlike other manufacturers, they do not own a gaming console company, so they don't spend a lot of time on really pretty graphics for doing the setup, it's very straightforward. Um, but nonetheless, easy and effective. It has Odyssey uh, Multi-EQ, which now with an app, you can actually tweak some of the um, equalization factors. I tend to not use that in my setup. I treat my room rather than um, letting this do sort of additional equalization. I find that the sound is a little bit better if I just have it sort of come out um, slightly more straight, as it were. But Odyssey is fantastic for doing stuff like measuring the distance between speakers and all of those elements. So definitely nice that it's there. It comes with a uh, microphone for you uh, uh, to do that. It's not super heavy. It's not super um, uh, obnoxious. It's just something that's just going to sit there with a very innocuous uh, front panel, uh, some dials and some key buttons when required, a very straightforward um, remote that is going to do what you want it to do, which is namely provide really, really um, um, uh, great sound at a, at, at a great and reasonable uh, price uh, given given its competition. Um, it, it's got a two-year warranty. It's, it's definitely something to consider if you're looking to certainly upgrade from something like just a straightforward soundbar. This, going this with a um, um, separate speaker system is, is you're going to get a much, much more robust. Especially if you go to a true 5.1.2 system, you're getting true Atmos. And then this is sort of bouncing off the ceiling stuff. You're actually going to get something that I think is, uh, is really going to um, up the level of impact uh, dramatically. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on social media, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or um, comments. Um, uh, uh, and thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. All the best. Take care.